Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will review the debut album by the... Fuck, I didn't look this up. Uh, I think they are an American funk metal band. Incubus, I think they are from uh, America, I'm not sure. California, so yeah, I think they are American. Just gonna look it up for a bit. This is kind of unprofessional, sorry for that, but I forgot to actually look it up, so there you go. Um, yeah, they are American. Uh, Calabasas, California, United States, so I was right. Of course I was. So, uh, yeah, debut album by Incubus. Um, one of my fans is a huge fan of this band, so that's why he requested this record, uh, requ requested by Strato Z. And I looked up this album cover, uh, I think about a month ago, and I thought it was pretty, uh, you know, appropriate for the band to have an incubus or a mushroom, uh, you know, on the cover that is called Fungus uh, Am Among Us. I'm not sure how you say that, Fungus Among Us, I'm pretty sure you say it like that. Uh, outside of it reminding me of, you know, funguses and mushrooms, it also reminds me of the god-awful Spongebob episode. And if you don't know that Spongebob episode, you know, it was past prime Spongebob. It was whenever Steven Hindenburg left, God bless his soul. And the original team, uh, you know, the other team went uh, along and ruined Spongebob just, you know, to... Uh, just to completely like squeeze them out and it is appropriately that spongebob is milk since you can squeeze a sponge you can uh, get every last drop out of the sponge i suppose that's a really nice metaphor that i never thought about but I, you know i think that spongebob if spongebob would be uh like a cow or you know a literal sponge in real life it would be the driest thing ever uh, up until this point but that's of course no surprise spongebob is like it should have been, uh, you know, cancelled or it should have been dead at this point. Way long dead, you know, but it, it, it's still going, so. <laughs> there you go, you gotta keep uh, milking sport about it, though. There's nothing in it anymore since no one is watching TV these days. But uh, outside of SpongeBob, you know, uh, I, ha I did not enjoy this album for the most part. I was really, like, not feeling it. And, you know, eventually I kind of grew to like it, kind of, but I have to say that this was a really difficult listen for me because overall this album is kind of tense, you know, it's kind of like poorly reviewed, it's kind of like, you know, a mixed bag, I suppose, but most people, you know, they, uh, uh, they say it's a polarizing review or... It's a rehash of, you know, other bands that I will name throughout this video, so don't worry about that. We have the first song, which is You Will Be A Hot Dancer, which is probably the most uh, unoriginal song of the album. Taking cues from bands at the time, you know, 1995, so you gotta have some... These are the bands that I will mention throughout the video. Rage Against the Machine, Primus, Rebel Chili Peppers, Fate No More. If you go to the YouTube comment section under this album or, you know, you go to reviews on all music or Wikipedia, Wikipedia, then all of them 100% of the time will say that this was a product of its time or, you know, they sound like a lesser of those bands that I just called, you know, every single one of them. I like most of those bands. I love Rage and Fate No More. I like the other two, so, you know, you have some good stuff, you have some good material material to work off of. I, I will even say that they sound like Jane's Addiction to me. So they are definitely a very uninspired group since they, they're ripping off so many uh, artists, you know, five artists, a handful of artists. Without really hiding it, they're, they're not... Uh, they're not really shy about, you know, wearing the influences on their sleeve. It's definitely heard throughout this entire album. It's 38 minutes long, 30 seconds, although it was 40 minutes on YouTube. I couldn't listen to it on Spotify because only Take Me To Your Leader was available. The, the hit single, the, the main single, the only single of the record. So this first song, it's really uninspired. It sounds really bad produced. It just sounds like a knockoff of all those bands that I just mentioned. So a very lukewarm uh, first opening song. 
Um, yeah, I also wrote it that it sounds like a corn fade no more. You know, if corn and fade no more made a baby, then it would sound like you will be a whole dancer to me. That's how it sounds. The new metal influences and the fade no more funk metal style, it's definitely on there. And I love, I do love me some debut corn, and I do love me some fade no more in general. I love fade no more. Not a huge fan of corn, but I do love the debut album. You know, that's a great album. Although I'm pretty sure that the band is has kind of like a reverse opinion on that. They hate the debut or something because it was too personal. It was, you know, it's kind of a dated product, but so is the entire corner discography. So do with them what you will. Then we have uh, Chef, which is arguably my least favorite song on the album. A very un unpleasant riff galore. I wrote it. You know, I made it a notes list so I can actually remember these songs. Um, yeah, the song overall sounded very unpleasant, a lot of unpleasant riffs to listen to, just a, a very badly mixed song, I would say. Very under the mix, very underdeveloped, a really underwhelming kind of filler song, it's only three minutes long. It's actually by one second the shortest song on this album. Yeah, so far the album is only going downhill, as in you know quality-wise. I was not a fur, I was not a fan of the first song, and I hate the second song right there. Absolutely loaded, shit with an explanation mark for some reason. I don't know where the uh, why that explanation mark is there because yeah, you know I have to shout how bad the song is honestly. So there you go. Then we have Trouble in Four to One, which is probably my second least favorite songs, and this is basically. A Red Hot Chili Peppers tri uh, tribute. Uh, that's why I wrote it, so there you go. And yeah, uh, also someone said that uh, Grierson of About.com observed at this early stage, Incubus just sounded like a tired rehash of Rage Against the Machine and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, pretty much. I cannot really hear the Rage influences because, you know, Rage is not really funk metal, they're more of an alternative metal band, I would say. Yeah, they're kind of funk metal, I suppose, new metal, you know, definitely the best group out of that scene, so there you go. Definitely love that band, but not a huge fan of Red Hot or, you know, this band right here. I would probably prefer Red Hot Chili Peppers up until this point, so there you go. And I'm not a huge fan of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, so that should say something. Um, yeah, this just sounds like a full-blown Red Hot Chili Peppers rip-off song, a tribute song, cover song. I don't really care how you will call it, it just sounds like it and it's not really good in my ears. That's really all that it is, Trouble in 4 to 1, I don't really get, get why it's called like that. They probably meant Trouble in 3 to 1 and then they would just go fucking uh, ape shit, you know, on, on their instrument. But instead of that, they were kind of like, oh, let's fuck around with the numbers a bit. Have four to one because oh, we're leaving out the three. I think that's the joke here. I, you know, I see what they are doing, but it just doesn't work out for me, honestly. Then we have um, I almost want to say the the fucking notes. Uh, Take me to your leader, which uh, starts off with weird alien noises, weird alien noises. It really sounds like a weird alien noise to me. It's just really fucking weird. Uh, the intro is really off-putting. It's really out of touch with me. Uh, it just really sounds uh, out of out of place on here. It really sounds weird. Um, and then you know we have these, you know, skipping. We have skipping vocals on this record. Cringy skip vocals. That's how I call them. You know what I mean with skip is like. They buffer, you know, they sound like they have fucking... Well, I'm not sure how you call it in English. Uh, yeah, yeah, stuttering. It sounds like they're stuttering or something. It's really annoying. And, you know, I'm not mocking people who have, uh, who have uh, stuttering problems. I'm not sure if you say it like that. But the problem is here that, you know, if you're stuttering, uh, stuttering. There you go. I was like, stuttering? What the fuck? But it sounds like someone is stuttering on there, or however you, however you say it, correct me if you know it. Not the best English speaker right there, but I'm, you know, trying to work it out. I've, I've done it for two, three years, so I should know it right now, but you know, it's, it's close I would say. But overall the song is not very good, you know, however you want to call it, the stuttering is not very good. It's really annoying, really off-putting. 
it is kind of catchy I guess the, uh, the album is going uphill a bit again because the album does have some melody on this track it does have some nice uh, parts at the ending but I do think that the first part is really off-putting and if you would put the song off you know early early in uh, early on the record then I wouldn't you know I wouldn't blame you and then we have medium which is uh, a very breath of fresh air for me because we have this woman um, you know oh this is actually the shorter song on the record three minutes and 12 seconds uh, you know shorter than uh, chef and some upcoming songs so uh, yeah I, w I actually said the chefs are my least favorite song which uh, tend to you know be at the three minute mark so I would probably hate this song but I actually really like it it actually has a really nice harmony at the beginning you know the, you know that's more you know when, whenever you get up and you hear that you know that's that's kind of melody that harmony that's kind of hummed by a very like lovely uh, woman on there i do actually like her vocal uh, i don't like it whenever she does uh, you know when she does that part i i think that she should have like whistled that or something and i know the whistle whistling is really gimmicky I do think that she should have done that or maybe play a flute or something, something there to improvise. You know, the vocal sounds nice at the beginning, but it sounds really gimmicky later on. Um, yeah, but overall this track was very melodic, it was very pleasant to listen to. There were some really cringy parts, uh, you know, midway through medium, uh, through midway through the track, but... It was overall a pretty good track, I would say. It's definitely a step where, uh, a step up from you know the first four tracks. I think that the first side of this record is really bad, really just piss poor, I would say. And I would say that the 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 second side is much better. It's way better. So definitely focus on the second side. Then we have Speak Free, which is arguably my favorite song of the record so far. Uh, very. Uh, you know, head bangable riffs, just a very uh, metal kind of song. It's really cringy, it's really like chunky, chunky full with balls and stuff like that. Ballsy song, full of chunk, you know. I, I do really like the composition on this track. It is a bit messy, it is a bit all scattered throughout the place, but I do think that the song overall does have a nice kind of ballsy, heavy metal kind of sound. So uh, that's what the record has going for it, which is good, so that is a good thing. Uh, then we have The Answer, which is, uh, I wrote that Anthony Kiedis joins the battle, you know, Smash reference, you gotta throw it in there. <laughs> um, I haven't actually played a Smash game in like 10 years or something, but I do want to pick it up again. Gotta buy a Switch, I suppose, or a Wii U. Well, don't do that, just buy a Switch. Oh man, I love Smash, but <laughs> I like... Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not gonna start about it because I have a very unpopular opinion about Smash, but, but I do love it, so there you go. That's why I made a reference. Uh, yeah, but Anthony Keith's joins the battle. It just sounds really like they're taking this Rattle Chili Peppers thing to a whole new level. A whole new level of confidence and power. <laughs> oh, way better bands, but whatever. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you know, the beginning sounds like Anthony Kiedis just joins the battle, you know, literally it just sounds like Anthony Kiedis on vocals from the Red Chili Peppers. And then later there's this really cringy uh, drum part where you have like the hi-hat cymbal, you know, you hear sort of take your, you hear sort of, you know, like, banging on sticks you know on a stone or something it sounds really poorly produced it sounds like you know the hi-hat from saint anger or something it just sounds very poor well it doesn't sound like saint anger per se but it sounds like it just sounds like a really like cheap uh drum kit that's how it sounds to me it just sounds really cheap it sounds really like mediocre to me so the answer is definitely like, it's a decent tune I, I suppose, but it is kind of like a step down compared to the uh, to the other two tracks, which are way better, which are the best two so far in my opinion. And then we e then we sink even further. I thought we were, we were gonna get better. You know, the album was going like this. I was like, oh no, the album is bad, it's bad, it's bad. 
Then it was kind of going, you know, decent again with medium, appropriately titled, and Speak Free was actually even getting pretty good. And then the answered kind of gets mediocre again, and then Psycho, Silo, Spin or something, like it's going straight down the gutter right now. Uh, I actually said a new word means horny, question mark, both of them. I don't know if Psych... Psycho Silo Sabin is a is a word. I'm not sure if it is if it is a word. Never heard of it by the way, so it's probably not. And they're saying a lot of the time, whenever they're saying the word, they're saying uh, oh I'm horny or it's time to get horny or um, yeah you're gay. Like something with horny, like the lyrics are really like really cringy, really awkward. The production is really, really bad. It just sounds like a Fade No More ripoff. It's like, this song is so fucking bad. I almost want to say album. You know, the album is kind of mixed for me, but this song is so fucking bad. It's, the, the lyrics are terrible. The, the song title is retarded. I just think that the song is really bad. Like, this might be my least favorite song, but Chef is definitely the lowest point uh, from this album. I would say it doesn't really get lower than that, but... Psycho uh, Psilocybin is definitely a, uh, a close second, I would say. And yeah, whenever I thought, you know, this album, like, it's le literally scraping the bottom of the barrel, you know, like, fucking worst of material of 1995, it could have been. But then, you know, w whenever I was putting the final nails in the coffin of this fucking atrocious record, then it just blows the fucking... It just blows up the lens, you know, it just blows uh, up the fucking uh, coffin, it just blows up the the shell, the shelf, and it just blows it right open and the band lifts once more with the amazing sink beneath the line. And definitely these two tracks, they're both three minutes fifteen, uh, three minutes and fifteen seconds. They're both really solid, they're both Solid tracks on this record, definitely my, my two favorite songs of the album, easily. Sing Beneath the Line, really good song, it's kind of like a smooth jazz kind of song, it reminds me of, you know, the Metallica cover of Enter Sandman, smooth jazz version, which you can find on Monthly Music Snob's channel, or, you know, that's, just uh, type in Metallica smooth jazz and you will probably get it, Enter Sandman, you know. Definitely a very good track. I love the smooth jazz production on this record. Uh, you have some skibidi you know, some scatman kind of like vocals on this track. It's kind of like a fuck all kind of uh, tone to it, but I do really like this composition right here. It sounds really good. It sounds very appropriately. It sounds funny. It sounds fade no more esque, you know, with a lot of humor, a lot of comedy. So, um, yeah, I did actually really like, like this track and I wish the, the whole album was like this, you know, Sink Beneath the Line and especially Hillicus. I'm not sure how you say it, how you say it but Hillicus, I'm gonna call it that. Uh, Hillicus is, uh, I actually said, a good song, question mark, explanation mark, solid compilation. So, basically, Hick, Hillicus is basically a compilation of everything that you've heard already. You have some headbangable riffs. You have some comedy vocals on there, you have some really great performances on there, you have some smooth jazz if I didn't say it already. You have some really heavy, cringy parts to it. So this is an, an amazing closure. I love this ending song, Hillicus is a great closure to an otherwise bad album. So if people are gonna, you know, make, uh, you know, I believe that Grunge made a fucking list of, you know, good songs of otherwise terrible albums, you know. I was pissed off, that, pissed off that they had, you know, Oasis Beer now, which is a hated record. Uh, do you know what I mean? It was good. I mean, that's the best song, but I mean, it's a great record, so shut the fuck up, Grunge. Uh, I mean, the fact that they're called Grunge, I mean, come on, uh, that's, that's a fucking dead genre at this point, so there you go. They had Machina by uh, Smashing Pumpkins, so I was pissed off about that. They had, oh, and I believe it, it was them, or it was like early Loudwire. Like, one of those fucking blokes had... Evil Empire by Rage Against the Machine on there and Bulls on Parade was a good song of an otherwise terrible album. Whoever made that list, I, I forgot who did that, I, I don't think it was Grunge, I, I think it was Loudwire. Like fuck you guys, Evil Empire is a 
classic. I fucking love that album. Um, yeah, but we're not talking about this great band. We're talking about this mediocre, bloated band. Uh, Incubus, you know. Um, I'm open to listen to more Incubus because, you know, according to critics, to ratings, they are going to get better after this. So I am uh, wondering if they will get better. Uh, I do really like this Hillicus song right there. So, uh, so Incubus is definitely a band that only can go up um, up until this point because this album was pretty bad. Uh, upon, uh, upon initial release, the album filled the chart. However, when re-released in 2000, Epic Immortal Records, it managed to peak at number 116 on the Billboard 200. The album received generally negative reviews from critics. Dean uh, Carson of All Music wrote, uh, <coughs> that was it. <laughs> Incubus, uh, Incubus's independent debut is an un unremarkable take on suburban MTV funk. funk. He also criticized frontman Brandon Boyd, writing there's much to dislike, notably frontman Brandon Boyd, who basically sounds like Anthony Kiedis or, you know, Fate No More singer or whoever, you know, Jason Jane's Addiction. Um, yeah, there's much to dislike, notably frontman Brandon Boyd, who growls like he wants the voice of anybody but himself, exactly. Tim Grierson of About.com observed at this early stage, Incubus just sounded like a tired rehash of Rage Against the Machine and Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is definitely the case. When looking back on Incubus's discography in a 2017 interview with Karang, Brandon Boyd observed with Fungus Among Us was super fun to make, but we didn't know what we were doing. Pretty much, you can pretty much sum this album up, up as, you know, the band, ha they are having fun on this record. You can definitely hear that they are having a blast recording this, but they have no idea what they're doing. They're so sloppy, they're so out of touch with everything. They just sound like everything but a distinctive band. They sound like all those bands that are named throughout the video, you know, some Primus too. Uh, I didn't mention them, but sure, you know, some bass parts sound like a uh, flea or a primus part, you know, a uh, less claypool like less claypool, less claypool, claypool, less claypool or a uh, flea. They sound like they are contributing throughout this album the entire time. So it sounds to me. Uh, I guess that's why a lot of our fans love that record. But for me, when I hear it, I truly cringe. Yeah. Perfect word right there. I would just as soon b bury it forever, and that's what funguses are, you know. That's what you're supposed to do with funguses, so very appropriately here. Uh, I have to say that this record does get better with every track, but overall, this is a very bloated, very underwhelming, very bad debut album. It's It's not like a one or a two, it's not even a three, I would say. It's not quite, you know, average, it's not a six, it's worse than that, but it's not the it's not a terrible album. It's I would say it's bad, leaning towards mediocre. That's how I would describe it. There are some good parts on there, and the last two tracks on, on this album are really good. I, I think the last two tracks are really good. I think the opening is really terrible. I think Take Me to Your Leader is a really bad single. Uh, so the first four tracks are really bad. The medium speak free are pretty good, and the last two tracks are really great. And uh, the answer, Psycho, Lost Bin are really bad. So this album is truly a mixed bag for me. And you know the the name, the production, the very uninspired rip of like sound, funk metal sound, turn me off too. So I would give this record a five. But since it's so uninspired, it sounds like so many other bands, but you know, a distinctive band. I'm gonna, you know, tear apart half a point. I'm gonna give this record a four and a half. Because, you know, if this record, you know, was what it was now, I would give it a five, you know, if it sounded a bit more original. But since it's so uninspired, since it's so, you know, such a borrowed, borrowed sound, I'm gonna give it a 4.5 because, you know, you know, if you would say to me, uh, this is a Red Hot Chili Peppers record or this is a Primus record, I actually would have believed you because, you know, it really sounds like a record like that. So I cannot blame you for that or I cannot blame the band for that. For that. Well, I can change it up, but that's what I did after this record. 
they want to forget it and you know that is very understandable so thank you for watching this video it's 25 minutes right now i want to uh you know make my reviews better so if i'm gonna do that the videos are gonna get longer too so there you go uh thank you for watching this video um yeah incubus's fucking fungus among us is a very it's a very like mediocre bad-ish album you know it's not terrible but it's definitely like a very underwhelming debut album so let me know what you think about it in the comments down below i've been ominous like on the subscribe to the channel and for feeders like this one let me know what you think about this record my whole fucking computer feed right there so i'm not even sure on what minute i am right now slow ass thing uh 25 uh, 25 minutes and 30 seconds it's it's freezing again thanks uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.